Good morning, everyone. So today we have a talk about uh, convolutional neural networks for segmentation of rodent brain. So for a change, not human, uh, but mice. And uh, the speaker is Professor Yussi Toka from uh, uh, University of Eastern Finland, where he's a professor of uh, biomedical image analysis, but he also an uh, adjunct professor at the uh, University of Technology in Tampere. And we met some years ago when I visited uh, Tampere. Um, yeah, you can start when you want. Yeah, uh, thank you, Alex, for inviting me to this talk, uh, to this event. And um, let me start by apologizing that uh, if, if my slides seem to be disorganized, but I finalized, uh, finalized them five minutes ago because uh, it, it has been a while since I have had uh, a presentation in this team and to be have some some new results so um yeah uh, my, my topic is convolutional neural networks for segmentation of rodent mri a uh, brain mri uh, i i will i will by by the way how, how much time do i have we should be within one hour including uh questions so okay 40 minutes yes. 50 minutes yes yes that, that is fine Yes, but uh, I, I will I will explain a uh, little bit later in the presentation why I uh, why I do this uh, this kind of work or why my group is doing this kind of work. Yes, uh, my group is a biomedical image analysis uh, group uh, that is based on uh, AI Virtanen Institute for molecular sciences at UEF. Uh, we are a research institute under uh, Faculty of Health, so we provide no undergraduate education. We only do research and, uh, of course, PhD education. And uh, uh, IV tries to respond to global health challenges uh, uh, created by the aging of the population and changes in lifestyle by focusing on the research on of cardiovascular and brain diseases. And I am on the brain diseases side. And um, I am leading biomedical image analysis group. And uh, currently, uh, uh, we have uh, as core members, uh, three postdocs and four PhD students. And then we have uh, numerous, uh, quite many affiliate members that we share with other research groups. And it, it's sometimes difficult to, you know, compute how, how many, uh, how many uh, persons do we have, because it's sometimes it's uh, uh, quite unclear if somebody belongs to our group or to in other research group within Ivy or uh, both groups or what what is, what is going on, and uh, we have uh, we have really good cooperation. For example, with uh, uh, a group of Alejandra Sierra, uh, who is uh, studying uh, uh, basically doing work on uh, validating MRI uh, with. with uh, uh, histological imaging and uh, Bitcan and group that is a uh, first way more famous group focusing on post-traumatic epilepsy and uh, nowadays also Idokan Paran Idokan group who is a uh, uh, junior faculty here who is uh, uh, doing uh, diffusion tractography and uh, and uh, also um, going to combine uh, MRI and uh, TMS and EEG. Um, uh, so our, our funding comes mainly from, uh, uh, well, our, our fund, funding comes from EU, uh, from Academy of Finland, uh, uh, various uh, international uh, consortium like Erapermec Consortium, Pat and Koch, uh, we have also funding from ERCO Foundation, that is the uh, biggest private funder in Finland, and uh, European Social Fund, as well as graduate schools. Uh, my, 
my research lines is uh, there are two research lines. Uh, one is uh, to develop automated image analysis methods with large scale data. Uh, and this includes method development for segmentation, super resolution, co registration. And uh, nowadays, of course, convolutional neural networks are function as workhorses of, of, of this research. Um, th this, this has been something that I have been doing uh, over 20 years. And, uh, and I, I really truly think that uh, these uh, uh, deep learning based tools uh, create some additional uh, are, are very interesting interesting and have truly revolutionized the field that we can do lots of stuff that we couldn't uh, before deep learning came along. Uh, the second line, uh, which is uh, probably, uh, which, which is a little bit more recent, I have been doing this for only 10 years now, but it's uh, applied machine learning for predictive modeling of uh, brain diseases. And uh, technically, it's uh, lots of uh, multi view, multitask machine learning feature selection. Uh, pretty, pretty simple models, so uh, mostly linear models because uh, uh, data sets are not that big and uh, applications to uh, very early detection of, of dementia. And the uh, reason that I'm not talking about uh, this application is that uh, uh, we have that just started uh, a couple of pretty interesting projects on, on, on this application, but, uh, but we don't really have new results yet. And uh, I, I, I think it's, uh, it's uh, somewhat, uh, um, I, I don't like to talk about uh, five years old stuff. Maybe I should like to talk about that, but <laughs> not right now. Yeah. Uh, so this is this is what we do. Oh yes, this is uh, this is uh, first slip in slide organizations. So um, different machine learning tasks require different machine learning tools. So we have uh, small data. We have wide data. Uh, we have truly big data. Uh, mostly if, if you are uh, doing predictions on an individual level or uh, some tools for diagnosis or uh, prognosis, uh, the data is necessarily small or wide data because, uh, because uh, if, if you have uh, data from uh, 1,000 individuals even, then, then that's not very many samples. Um, but uh, in, inter interesting stuff in machine learning have happened in big data area of, of uh, and uh, deep neural networks is, is of course one thing. So what, what, is, what is big data in medical imaging? Well, segmentation is one example, because our samples are not uh, individuals, but they are voxels. So, so this brings us to the big data regime, uh, and uh, we, can, we can actually use uh, these tools that have been developed uh, uh, in machine learning and computer vision uh, circles and adapt them wisely to our application so, so that they make changes. Okay, uh, so I, I wanted to do segmentation. And uh, then, I, then I started um, here at the University of Eastern Finland, 2017. 
And uh, University of Eastern Finland is a hub of a preclinical MRI in, in Finland. So, so all preclinical MRI devices are in Kuopio in this city, in, in this area. So we have, uh, um, this is a little bit old picture, but we have uh, uh, four, four devices here at our, our uh, institute, our university. And uh, there is also a company called, pretty big company called Charles River, uh, which has his, uh, its uh, clinical MRI stuff done in Kuopio, in the same city. So they, at least in 2019, they had uh, two additional scanners. And these don't exist anywhere else in Finland. So um, I, 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 of course, wanted to do preclinical, something for preclinical MRI. And uh, then I was, uh, then I was asking the head of uh, uh, the director of MRI um, MRI facility here in in Kuopio, Professor Olli Krön, that uh, how how many how many animals are you imaging? Uh, how many animals are you imaging? And uh, he responded that. Uh, yeah, we have this wonderful cohort where we have over 100 animals, and I, I must have looked a little bit disappointed about the number. And uh, then I asked, uh, "But you have you have manual segmentations of these images?" No, no, there was no manual segmentations of anything. But uh, then. Uh, then uh, we conducted actually uh, Charles River, and they had manual segmentations of pretty many uh, many images, and uh, so we could uh, uh, we, we could uh, organize these incredible datasets that that we are using in in this work, uh, and that uh, are are bigger than anybody else's in preclinical <laughs> preclinical MRI segmentation and we could uh, we could uh, publish the first first works about preclinical MRI segmentation using convolutional neural networks so that that's the story uh, then then to the science and uh, oh uh, this is this is uh, still uh, uh, about uh, two persons that have been uh, that have been doing most of the work uh, presented here. Uh, one is uh, Juan Miguel, who who is uh, online, and uh, another one uh, is uh, Ricardo De Feo, uh, who is. Uh, uh, Came came from Italy and uh, has uh, stayed in Finland, but he now works for Charles Rivers. Um, so uh, this this uh, this person have done done most of the most of the hard work here. So um, MRI segmentation. Um, Uh, it is uh, required for quantitative analysis of also preclinical MRI, uh, so so uh, animal MRI. We can compute lesion volumes, ROI volumes, uh, do shape analysis, uh, do uh, quantitative MRI analysis uh, on, on regional level, uh, every kind of every kind of thing. And uh, quantitative quantitative imaging is of course important in preclinical uh, setting uh, because we are in in preclinical imaging uh, we are not uh, interested in diagnosing animals but uh, we are interested in studying animals models of uh, human diseases uh, 
and uh, also they are uh, preclinical imaging is important for drug development. And uh, really, uh, there's a requirement of, of to be quantitative. Uh, otherwise, it's not, not really useful. So, uh, but um, uh, un until a couple of years ago, nobody has uh, had uh, looked for the possibilities of uh, using uh, 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 convolutional neural networks for segmentation of, of this kind of data. Uh, that is quite interesting because uh, uh, this is this uh, is is probably probably segmentation of uh, uh, preclinical MRI is uh, easier even than segmentation of human MRI because of the uh, less less variation at least in normal conditions between the animals. Okay. Uh, we don't want to do segmentation manually because it's uh, time consuming. Uh, it's uh, subjective. And uh, it's not really the reproducible. Uh, then we have um, automated segmentation algorithms for brain MRI, and these are mostly based on reg registering images to an atlas that has been pre-segmented. Of course, we can, uh, we can uh, do uh, non-linear uh, registration of the template to the image to be segmented and then propagate, propagate the labels from the atlas. Um, this is, however, this is sensitive to anatomical variations, especially if you have, uh, for example, animals with lesions. It's not really working. And, uh, and also, this, is, uh, this is, uh, takes pretty long time. Uh, and, uh, it, pre-processing of images can be complicated. Um, we can a little bit uh, do better if, if we have multiple atlases, so multiple uh, mouse or track rat brains uh, annotated manually, and uh, then we can do multiple non-linear registrations to the image to be segmented. Sorry, what are currently the at most uh, used atlases? There was this Paximos or the Allen or there is something else? Uh, no, actually, um, in in preclinical MRI, we don't. Those atlases are not uh, because they are not, uh, uh, you know, uh, Paximos atlas is not uh, digital atlas, it, it's not usable for segmentation purposes. Um, and um, Allen uh, brain atlas is uh, for, for something else also. It, it is not meant for MRI segmentation, but we have, uh, we have atlases. Atlases are, uh, you know, just databases of images that have been segmented manually. And uh, I, I will mention mention actually one, okay. just one, in later of of the of the pre presentation. But uh, yeah, uh, there there are there are atlases and there are also standard spaces and uh, and uh, uh, but not not so many. You would think that uh, there there would be huge amount of these, but uh, not so much. Um, so um, 
we can uh, then when we have done several uh, registrations to the image to be segmented, uh, we can average uh, this segmentation uh, and combine them, for example, simply by majority voting or by some other more complicated approach, uh, like uh, steps. Uh, this uh, strategy is uh, less sensitive to anatomical variations, uh, but uh, segmentation time is even even much much longer than than uh, uh, with single at atlas methods, and uh, pre-processing is equally complicated. So. Um, um, we wanted to try convolutional neural networks to this application. And uh, as you know, uh, a convolutional neural network is a neural network with, uh, with uh, convolution layers. Uh, and uh, typically, typically, these are so-called deep networks, so they have many hidden layers. Uh, it is uh, trained by optimizing its parameters uh, based on uh, image segmentation pairs. And uh, as every discriminative machine learning model network network is, is a kind of summation of architecture uh, cost function that is used for, uh, that is minimized and uh, optimization algorithm that is that is used to minimize that cost function. And uh, then you have uh, different combinations of this, these uh, elements. And uh, in uh, medical image segmentation, uh, uh, architecture uh, that was uh, pretty uh, that, that was uh, revolutionary, was uh, so-called unit encoder decoder uh, architecture. Um, that was published in 2015. Uh, there, there has been many, many, many more like this after this, but this was, I, I, I think this was a game changer because it uh, enabled uh, enabled uh, uh, segmentation of whole image at the same time. So you didn't, uh, it, it speeded up things considerably. Um, I, I will be um, uh, talking a lot about dice scores, that is a widely used segmentation, Im image segmentation quality measure uh, but I hope you are familiar with that, so I don't need to uh, repeat. Um, so, um, first algorithm that I will present is so-called MUNET, um, that is uh, aimed to uh, um, anatomical region segmentation of mouse brain MRI. Um, and um, and uh, we, um, uh, th this is a kind of uh, encoder decoder architecture network unit like architecture as a, and as a loss function we used uh, kind of multitask uh, dice loss and uh, we tested this approach with uh, independent test set of uh, nearly 2000 MRI uh, volumes of, uh, of mice and uh, this was really successful achieving over 0.9 uh, 
Something is wrong with the microphone. We are. It's the. Okay. Oh no. Was fine and then it started breaking, but I don't think it's the connection. Yeah. Try again. Okay. And now it's fine. Now it's fine. Okay, is it better now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I uh, just started my headphones. Um, so we did the evaluation of with independent test set of um, nearly 2000 MRI volumes, and this was uh, pretty successful uh, since die scores were over 0.9 on average with every every uh, structure that we, we studied. Uh, we, of course, had a quite limited uh, number of uh, structures here uh, because of the, yeah, uh, the data was obtained from, uh, 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 from certain, certain uh, uh, project that is about, about Huntington disease mice models, and uh, they were interested in these brain structures. Um, so um, we did also a uh, comparison between uh, uh, MUNET and uh, STEPS. So, so um, uh, th this was uh, with uh, train, train and validation set, and uh, we used, uh, of course, animal-wise uh, cross-validation. Uh, so train set was uh, 128 MRIs from uh, 32 animals. And, uh, and uh, average uh, die score across across different structures was a uh, little bit over 0.93 for MUNET and uh, something like uh, 0.88 with uh, with uh, depths uh, with, with this multi atlas uh, based segmentation method, which uses uses uh, quite. Uh, quite complicated uh, strategy of uh, combining different different segmentation and um, uh, important here is that moon segmentation took about uh, under a second while se step segmentation of one image took two hours also and uh, interestingly uh, when we trained MUNET on steps segmentations, we also got better results than uh, steps itself. So this, this, uh, in my mind, this uh, kind of uh, is uh, one demonstration that uh, we can really, really learn something about about the problem uh, with with the. Uh, these uh, approaches. Um, yes, uh, then we have this uh, large independent test set, which is about uh, uh, different mouse models of Huntington disease. Uh, there are there are several several different models. Uh, you can check the paper for for details. And uh, there are also males and females and uh, wild type animals. And uh, I, I was uh, quite uh, surprised actually how good uh, good the segmentations were, because not 
not very many things uh, uh, not very many things failed I'll, I'll do it it's uh, you know comparing wild type mice to Huntington disease mice they are quite different um, then um, uh, we, we did also evaluation using uh, so-called NEAT, MRM NEAT Atlas, that is, uh, um, that is uh, one, one atlas that exists. It's uh, only 10 uh, rats, uh, but uh, even, even here, uh, Moonet uh, did better than multi atlas, and uh, this was of course uh, uh, based on cross validation. This evaluation because of only only ten uh, ten volumes. So this uh, kind of uh, kind of uh, gave a, gave us confidence that we don't need so many labeled frames uh, to uh, train these networks, and a uh, little bit less is is also sufficient. Um, then uh, Miguel uh, developed a, a neural network for rodent brain MRI lesion segmentation that is called RATLESNet, and it's version two because we had version one, but then we did version two. And uh, we can also show here, as everybody likes to show, that uh, uh, we get uh, we get better agreement on average uh, with uh, neural networks than uh, integrator uh, agreement. And uh, also, the architecture here is uh, is kind of unit-like encoder decoder architecture and loss function we use this uh, cross entropy uh, plus dice that are I think equally weighted um, here we have had um, as data uh, altogether a uh, little bit over 900 uh, uh, MRIs to weight it uh, of, of rats with ischemic stroke. And uh, this data was compiled from 12 distinct studies with uh, various uh, different time points after the insult. So, so there's huge vari variability of deletions, although all are within the same, uh, same stroke model to this team of Carl. Uh, we divided uh, this into uh, 36 train scans, 12 validation scans, and uh, uh, 868 uh, scans for testing. And we did uh, this uh, uh, two different splits. I, I'll, I'll um, go to that later. Um, the reason why we um, have so large test sets and so small training sets is that uh, if if we uh, would demonstrate that something would work with uh, uh, let's say 100 training volumes uh, that that wouldn't be usable uh, because who who can no no one can have 100 training volumes manually annotated. Uh, so it it had it would have to be completely generalizable then. Uh, but if we can demonstrate that we can uh, work with relatively small training sets, well, I don't know if if it's ex exactly small here, but uh, uh, still manageable uh, for most most people and uh, then we can really demonstrate that this can be something that you could use also more, more generally so uh, 
we did uh, evaluations against other network architectures and uh, as you can see um, we are a little bit better on a, on a house of distance but on a dice coefficient these are this uh, other some other architectures also achieve kind of kind of similar results and uh, what else you can see from this uh, uh, this table is that post processing does not make any any difference uh, to the to the uh, accuracies. However, um, more these in were white stars or so rats. Uh, did you find difference? Huh? So white star are the rats. So yes. you, you had the difference with mice and rats, or uh, no? This is this is completely different from the mice work. This is different data set. This okay. is uh, white star rats with uh, stroke lesions. Uh, mice were uh, wild type mice for training and Huntington mice for for testing. We haven't yet uh, done the transfer between mice and rats. But uh, we will be doing that, kind of waiting, uh, waiting eagerly. How 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 will that be? What what can be gained from having something for for rats uh, to to uh, segment mice? But uh, let's see. I, I we don't yet have anything. So, uh, but. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, there's uh, th this is this is kind of interesting thing because we did uh, two kinds of uh, train test divisions. In homogeneous uh, division, uh, we uh, because th this data was compiled from twelve different studies, uh, we did what uh, uh, what, what was uh, you know kind of. Uh, Kind of would be expected from the actual usage of, of these algorithms. So we took the first study as a training set and use it used uh, uh, it, it uh, as a training set and the rest of the rest uh, eleven other studies were used as test set. And this is the homogeneous division. Heterogeneous division is that uh, is where we selected uh, scans uh, uh, so that they were representative of, of the whole set. And uh, actually, we still get pretty good results using homogeneous division of, of the, of the um, test and train. Uh, of course, this is this is a little bit a uh, little bit worse than uh, uh, heterogeneous division, but uh, shows that you can you can uh, al also in practice do this and assume that this generalize uh, generalize quite well uh, to the to the uh, future data. Of course. Uh, uh, scanning parameters uh, have been approximately the same, I think. Uh, but uh, but uh, this data has been really acquired during many years, uh, so so that you can really uh, conclude that uh, this is this is something that you can actually do. Okay. Um, um, then um, we have uh, segmented more or less uh, normal normal uh, mice, and we have segmented lesions uh, from uh, stroke model rats. So, what about then uh, segmentation of? Uh, uh, region segmentation of the brains uh, that contain lesions. Uh, 
so uh, Miguel developed this uh, Medic Deep Lab version three for hemisphere segmentation after stroke. And this uh, data set is, uh, is a subset of the data that was used for lesion segmentation. And uh, um, this uh, hemisphere segmentation is important because it's, uh, it's a biomarker for acute stroke in, in, in rat models of acute stroke uh, because of the uh, swelling uh, uh, swelling kind of kind of shows in in enlarged uh, hemisphere of the of the uh, ipsilateral in large ipsilateral hemisphere. So so uh, once again we uh, have a new model. Uh, which is a little bit more complicated than previous previous ones, and uh, uh, we also use deep supervision in in training. Um, so um, and um, results results are here. Uh, so there has not been many many approaches or approaches at all for hemisphere segmentation of the lesioned uh, uh, rat brains. I, I don't think actually there are that there are uh, any works in uh, hemisphere segmentation of human brain uh, when there are lesions. Uh, but I, I'm not certain about that. Uh, so, for the brain segmentation, you can you can see that uh, these uh, deep learning approaches uh, work better than uh, traditional approaches, rats and uh, arbit. And uh, for for hemisphere segmentation, you can see that uh, in in terms of how to of distance. Uh, Medic Deep Lab uh, version version three is is the best architecture of of those compared, but uh, others come come uh, the difference is is not so huge, and uh, basically every uh, convolution neural network architecture did quite well in 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 hemisphere segmentation. Um, and uh, uh, this is this is uh, this is uh, pretty interesting. But because also in humans, um, if you have uh, big pathologies in brain, uh, you know huge lesions or uh, some something else there there are not very many segmentation methods that have been developed for for these cases uh, maybe because it's not uh, it's not so important in humans uh, because because it's uh, yeah why, why would you you be interested in a volume of hippocampus of of a human who has a brain tumor uh, you are interested in brain tumor and how how to treat that. Uh, but in in animal models, uh, because these are used to develop uh, drugs and treatments for human diseases, it's important to have quantitative uh, quantitative in, information um, uh, also also in case of uh, cross lesions. We also, also uh, considered hippocampus segmentation after a traumatic brain injury in rats. And uh, this is now different data from previously. This comes from uh, our own institute. 
and uh, this is from uh, two large uh, post-traumatic epilepsy studies, uh, EpiTarget and EpiBias. And uh, we used only um, only a small number of animals as a as a uh, train and train and test and uh, did this uh, using leave one animal out uh, cross validation uh, testing using leave one animal out cross validation and um, here. Um, Uh, that was that was uh, uh, because we were we were interested in getting these images segmented rather than uh, trying to trying to uh, validate a particular segmentation algorithm. Uh, here is uh, some results, and uh, uh, you can see that uh, really uh, major. Uh, Multi atlas segmentation and uh, convolutional neural networks do approximately approximately the same. Um, um, convolutional neural network has a uh, uh, little bit better first case performance as uh, as uh, uh, multi-atlas segmentation and I, I think that our uh, neuroanatomists were more happy about uh, convolutional neural network based segmentations than, than the, uh, the multi-atlas segmentation. So um, this is for different databases kind of kind of uh, same same results although here uh, uh, in EpiTarget uh, dataset, we we see first time that uh, uh, multi-atlas segmentations can be uh, even a little bit uh, little bit better uh, than convolutional neural network uh, because of the small training set and probably also uh, small uh, um, the uh, low resolution of of the of the images. Um, we then went on and used this hippocampus segmentation to uh, study uh, hippocampal position and orientation as biomarkers for post traumatic epilepsy. And uh, uh, th this this is once again. A little bit, uh, little bit complicated construct, but uh, uh, the results are that that uh, we can we can um, uh, separate uh, some animals from those that have suffered traumatic brain injury based on their hippocampal position and orientation. That is not surprising. We can we can do it very well, uh, but uh, as as a as a biomarker for post-traumatic epilepsy, it uh, it doesn't doesn't uh, really work, except perhaps at a at pretty late time point after a injury. Okay. Um, uh, then. Uh, I have uh, I have presented uh, pretty many neural network architectures with pretty many loss functions and uh, pretty many uh, algorithms to uh, optimize these loss functions. I I don't have anything to uh, really um, to categorize or uh, to um, explain the performance of of uh, uh, different network architectures uh, but i have uh, i have uh, uh, something or miguel has uh, has uh, done something to explain uh, or to create kind of develop a generalized frame framework to present different loss functions uh, 
for image segmentation and also also that resulted in in some some thoughts about uh, why certain loss functions are difficult to optimize and why certain loss functions are not robust to something like a, a class imbalance or whatever and uh, this is this is a pretty pretty simple framework as you can uh, present most loss functions in in uh, in uh, um, uh, as a uh, inner product between so-called uh, uh, region-wise map and uh, uh, predictions. So uh, the trick here is that the region-wise map is not a uh, scalar valued, but it contains as many components as, as uh, there are labels. And you can then construct these region-wise maps uh, based on crown truth uh, via simple uh, simple operations, and uh, uh, you can pretty much uh, present all all the um, all the loss functions that are uh, uh, separable in in pixel wise. Uh, pixel wise, uh, with pixel or voxel wise manner, with uh, with this loss function on on one that cannot be really really presented this way is a uh, complete house of loss, which is not separable separable in 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 this way. Um, but I have almost used my time, so. A uh, few take-home messages and uh, uh, convolutional neural networks are really a weapon of choice uh, for 3D preclinical MRI segmentation. Uh, and uh, we have shown this with very large databases of uh, preclinical MRI that are varied and uh, and uh, we can we can trust that this is this is the case maybe maybe it's not surprising but it is the case um cns uh, cns are uh, typically more accurate and faster than multi atlas segmentation and uh, cns also provide similar accuracy scores than interrated agreements between two human operators um not very much uh, training data is needed. Uh, I, I would really like to like to answer answer to this question in more con comprehensive manner. So, how much uh, training data? How how many label training images you really need? Uh, but uh, un unfortunately, we we don't have a really comprehensive. Uh, comprehensive study about this, and uh, what, what is what is really outstanding is that uh, CNNs also work well for region segmentation of lesion brains, which is which is something that uh, some people were surprised about. Um, with this, I, I, I thank you for your attention, and if there are any questions, I, I hope that I can answer. Yeah, maybe I start. Uh, so that uh, because we are do a lot of connectivity here from diffusion data, and one of the things uh, you need always at the beginning is to register an atlas to define the beginning and the end of uh, uh, of the connection, so I was thinking if uh, it will make sense to instead of registering an atlas uh, for to for doing the uh, after the tractography, if, if we you segment first and then you use the same segmentation as a reference for uh, uh, building the connectome. Yeah. Uh. Uh, hard to say, really. 
if it's uh, if it's uh, if it would be better that way. Of course, it depends on the uh, on the uh, quality of the segmentations and quality of the registrations. So, which one is uh, which one is better? So, how 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 can you get more accurate picture of the of the anatomy and uh, potentially also uh, also which is more adequate for for the uh, building building the tracts actually because this is this is not this is not easy especially when you have uh, lesions uh, the tractography is is extremely difficult. Yeah, depending on the least brain tumor, yes, uh, for sure. And then also, like, mm, okay, for mice, you had uh, the the reason uh, to um, because there was not not such amount of uh, atlas or segmentation, so there wasn't in humans. Uh, we we have atlas atlases, but why are we not also doing something like this if it's shown that is better what do you think because people are have, are used to use atlases for humans yeah probably i i, I think there are pretty good uh, uh neural network based segmentation algorithms in in humans also uh most notably in um, free surfer now this year mm -hmm. they have uh, published uh Syncec. That is that is pretty interesting framework to generate uh, generate the segmentations and uh, they claim that uh, it's better than than what they have uh, traditionally done. But still, but, the majority of people is still using atlas. Yeah, it, it's because they have uh, used atlases for ten years and it and works for them it's and uh, resistance. Yeah. To them. Yeah, the, the, it, it, it will take a certain amount of time before, uh, you know, these tools uh, can reach the maturity uh, so that people people will start to use them. Because uh, nowadays it's also also difficult that um, uh, uh, that, uh, you know, uh, you might like to use pre-existing pipelines and you don't like to replace anything in your pipeline if it works and uh, and uh, also it, it it would just take time i guess yep anybody else yeah maybe i i'll, I'll walk in hello I'm Shimon, Hello. I'm Alex, uh, student. Uh, yeah, so basically I would like to, to ask because uh, you only tested uh, the CNN networks and made a comparison uh, of, of your architectures and the, and the ones that are existing. I'm wondering uh, if uh, there are any uh, neural networks based on transformer uh, and attention mechanism uh, used for for this problem. And did you do any comparisons with transformers, or maybe you plan to do so? Because I'm I'm curious uh, how they would how they would uh, perform in this setting for the image segmentation. I don't honestly have no uh, idea how how would they perform. Maybe Miguel, if if you have some further insights if you are still online. Yes, um, I have no idea how they would perform in this type of data. There is this uh, unit trans or trans unit, I don't remember the name. So there is yeah, already trans. some work that exists, but I don't think anyone has tried this on this type of data. And I don't know if it works. I mean, I think these things take a need couple of years of people trying it on different data sets and and see if it works but i actually would like to try it that's one of the things i would like to do next yeah yeah 
Yeah, because for 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 uh, I don't know if it was applied on animal data, but there is a something called Metformer, I believe, and it's performing really good for the segmentation in the clinical data. I think they were using human data. I haven't also researched this topic uh, deeply, uh, but uh, I'm I'm curious how it would perform on small amount of data because CNNs, as you showed, can have little data and and do really good uh, performance. With transformers, sometimes, like usually, it is like you need a ton of data. Uh, that that's also a thing that I would like I would like to say. So, fingers crossed for your work to appear. I would definitely <laughs> read it. <laughs> Waiting like, for it. Like for me, the an interesting question is how do they perform compared to NN unit? Because nowadays, I mean, whatever you do is probably better than unit. But uh, yeah, I mean, that, that would be interesting to see how these two uh, compare. Because NN unit uses a super extensive data augmentation strategies. So it's a, it can be useful when you have little data. But yeah, I don't know about this transformer based. That's the next step. Anybody else? Or someone online? Okay, then uh, if we had enough for today, <laughs> I thank you again, uh, Yussi and uh, uh, Juan Miguel. And yeah, it was nice uh, seeing what you were doing. I will be more interested in maybe if someone in the future we take a look at the connectivity and diffusion if someone uh, uh, because it, it's I, I can I can uh, you can ask Baron Baron Idokan who is the junior uh -huh. faculty he's he's doing uh, also in also in mice because I know he's doing it in human no he's not doing it in mice or in rats in, no, no, only in humans. And uh, well, uh, uh, we have been doing some of the some of the uh, uh, traps uh, in in uh, uh, post traumatic epilepsy, but uh, this this uh, seems 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 not so. Uh, encouraging, uh, not, not so encouraging. Uh -huh, okay. Yes, yes, and uh, it, it's it's not you know the connectome, but it, it's mostly about individual tracks tracts uh, that are relevant for the for the biomarkers that uh, they wish to uh, develop. Um, but um, yeah. Um, I, I nobody here is uh, extremely interested about connectome in in at at least at the level of, of MRI in in mice or rats. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid. I don't yeah. know why is that. There's a, maybe their search question doesn't re if they do they doesn't require that. Yeah, okay, that's then, uh, we thank you. Thank you. Know if you can hear us. <laughs> and yeah, we was nice and maybe we keep in touch if we have ideas or if we are uh, we have we are going to use this um, this tool or. Um, yes, yes, uh, these are mainly for preclinical imaging, mm -hmm. but of course similar tools exist for human human uh, MRI segmentation, so. No, it's. It's not okay. and uh, then I would uh, like to still uh, advertise that we have uh, made available some uh, convolutional neural network tutorials if you are if you are interested. Uh, if, if you have uh, somebody. Who is co just coming. Uh, then. Uh, Mm -hmm. This this could be of use. 
Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay, but it it was nice, and thank you for the invitation. And uh, I'll hope hope to meet you uh, in in some conference or yeah. or, <laughs> or more <laughs> one of the guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 Bye. 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 Bye.